Highland Dirk, the main sidearm, everyday tool and symbol of Highland warrior honour for hundreds of years. In this video I'm going to cover its history, cultural significance, martial application and test it out as an everyday bushcraft knife. Then combine some of this knowledge to reenact a time in Scottish history where a few Highland warriors used their knowledge of land, craftsmanship and skill at arms to defeat a superior fighting force. Stay tuned. Hi folks, Tom from Fan Dabby Dozy here with another video for the Highlander series where I'm looking at the typical 17th century Highlander in the context of wilderness living skills. But in this video we'll be touching on some broader subjects, not just wilderness living skills. I'm happy to say this video is a collaboration with my buddy Heiko from the Catering Society. Uh, we thought that we would combine his historical and martial expertise with my bushcraft knowledge and see what we could come up with. So it's taken me a while to get my hands on a dirk that I was happy with. Partly because I wanted something that was going to be robust enough to be used as sort of heavy duty bushcraft knife and also something that I could forge. But a uh, big thanks to my buddy Matt from Fletforge who made me this beautiful robust blade. He then did a, a rough outline for the handle. I then shaped the handle and carved some historically inspired designs on it. I also made a, a leather sheath for it. I'm no master craftsman but seems to be doing the job so far. Matt is a guy who also made me a ski and do a few months ago. I'll put a link down to his Etsy page in the description below. You should go check it out. So the Scottish dirk is Beotac and Gaelic. And it probably evolved from the medieval bollock dagger. Um, the word dirk probably comes from an older German or Dutch word. The characteristics of it would have varied from the time period. But the sort of earlier ones, sort of pre-17th century, were very triangular and pointy and then later on they became a bit more broader and wider uh, typically single edged blade sometimes double edged at the tip and between 40 to 50 centimeters in length but mine's a wee bit shorter at 35 centimeters so in the past dirks were either made by local blacksmiths or some of the good ones were sometimes imported from places like germany uh, they're also sometimes made from broken sword blades. And when the Jacobites were defeated and the Disarming Act came to Scotland, it meant that no man was allowed to carry any weapons, including his dirk. But dirks were still carried in Scottish regiments in the British Army. And uh, so during that sort of Victorian period, the design of the dirks changed a bit. They had a bit more of a ceremonial look to them. Even today in Scotland, the dirk is sometimes carried as part of the ceremonial dress in the Scottish regiments. And you still see it used uh, in weddings to cut the wedding cake or at burn supper to cut the haggis. So since the Highlands had a proud warrior culture, pretty much every man would have carried his dirk in him most of the time when he was out and about. Only really wealthier people could afford a sword, but most people had a dirk. So since the Highlands had a strong warrior culture, the dirk became the symbol of Highland warrior honor. If you can say the katana is the symbol of the samurai, then the dirk became the symbol for the Highland warrior. It also had great cultural significance and people would even swear oaths upon the holy iron of their dirk and this was considered more powerful than say swearing upon a bible. So although the dirk was an everyday tool you could argue that it was primarily a weapon, an everyday carry. So let's explore that. But first, YouTube disclaimer, I'm not condoning violence in any way, shape or form. This is just for historical interest. So here's some shots of Heiko using the dirk in different martial applications. Check it out. So what about its uses as an everyday tool? Well, we can only really speculate what someone may have used their dirt for. But as Wilderness Living Skills is my primary interest for this series, I thought I would test out this dirt and the sort of tasks that I would hope to achieve when I'm out in the woods. So, stay tuned.
So before I share my thoughts about the Dirk, I thought I'd tell a wee story. And uh, the story that Heiko sent me, and it's about a, a real life historical battle that happened in Scotland. And I thought it'd be perfect for this video because it includes the Dirk being used in both a bushcrafty sense and a martial sense. So the battle happened on the Isle of Skye and happened between McMartin of Finnegan versus Dougal Campbell and his crew. So the Campbells were making their way across the landscape of the Isle of Skye and they were led into a trap and were ambushed by the McMartins. And Dougal Campbell and a small number of his men were separated from the main fighting force and separated from their main weapons. So all they had on them were just their dirks. And they had to retreat and they found their way to where a stream branched off the Kilmartin River. And here they cut down branches of alder and quickly fashioned cutgulls out of them. Now a cutgull is basically a fighting club. There's lots of different names of them depending on the culture. The ones from Gaelic culture are sort of three feet long with sort of bulbous end. So anyway, they cut down branches of alder and made these clubs, so all they had was just their dirks and these clubs. As was often the case when up against an outnumbered force, they took up positions at a ford of the river where it would be difficult for their enemies to rush them all at once. So they came to a narrowing bit of the river so that their enemies couldn't surround them. Although the men were outnumbered, there was something of a leap fighting force described as picked men and trained to use the arms and were no stranger to a fray. When the McMartins attacked, the Campbells fought furiously, killing nearly all of their foes armed only with their dirks and clubs. McMartin of Finnegan himself fell to the dirk in the middle of the ford. Thanks Heiko for sending me that story. Um, but it got me thinking, I wonder how easy it is to make a, a cut gull, a fighting stick, uh, when you're under that much pressure. So imagine you're you're on the run, you're being chased by your enemies, you're outnumbered, your enemies are armed with broadsword and targe, all you have is your dirk. That's quite a bit of stress to be under, uh, but these guys still manage to quickly make a fighting stick and fend off and defeat their enemies with it. So now I want to put myself in the mindset of these men and see how quickly I can fashion a cudgel fighting stick just using my dirk. Now I'm not sure if I have any alder trees in this particular area, but I'll see what I can find and I'll time it and uh, see how I get on. Stay tuned. Oh, nettle sting up the kilt. Ooh. So I'm trying to find a branch of a tree that already has a sort of natural cuticle shape to it to try to save time, but that's easier said than done. My ancient Highlander stopwatch and go. Right, there you go, ready for battle. Two minutes twenty. Uh, obviously that's not including time to actually find a good stick. Um, I've been faffing around with the camera to get that in, so... Uh, let's say two minutes to make something like this. So in my mind, as I was running through the woods, I was trying to keep my eye out for a straight branch about an inch and a half in thickness that joined into another bigger branch which I could then use to make the club end. Um, so that was quite a good find of the sycamore tree. Obviously the men in the story use an alder tree which makes sense as they are usually found growing next to rivers which is where the men made them and fought with them. Now it's a shame I don't have an alder tree to demonstrate this but um, if you look at an alder tree often the, the side branches do come off quite straight and within this sort of thickness. So um, potentially it would have been easier to find uh, a branch like this um, next to a riverbank. Now I know what people are gonna ask, why don't you just pick up stick off the ground and not worry about finding one with this shape and wasting time cutting it? Well, you could, but if you pick a stick off the ground then there's also risk that it's gonna be rotten and it will just fall apart. 
Also, these men were going up against broadsword and targe. And as Heiko's going to show in a minute, there's some various techniques of using the kudgo as a parrying weapon against a sword. So having a good sturdy branch and this sort of club-like shape is, um, is very useful for that. If you had all the time in the world and you wanted to make the perfect kudgo, then you'd probably cut a green branch off a hardwood tree and season it and, you know, oil it and stuff. And that's going to give you a proper solid weapon. So how exactly might have those warriors fought with these two weapons in that battle? Well, we don't really know and there's no surviving records of how exactly people might have fought with this weapon combination. But here is Heiko demonstrating some different ways of fighting with a Dirk and Kudko. Enjoy. So thanks Heiko for putting together those clips, really cool stuff. So finally, what's the conclusions on this particular dirk as an uh, everyday tool? Well, you could argue how historically accurate it is. As you know, this particular one, the blade is a bit shorter and a bit sort of chunkier than those early historical examples, um, which meant it did very well in terms for chopping. Uh, it really could chew through some branches. Um, Obviously, just like any other long bladed tool, it's not so good for fine tasks like fine carving and, uh, you know, it's a bit more dangerous, uh, but it still did the job. The blade is beautifully sharp. Tried getting some sparks from it by hitting it with some flint, but I uh, couldn't really get much. Uh, but all in all, really, really happy with it. So thanks again to Heiko for helping me out in this video. You should go check out his YouTube channel. I'll also put a link to his Facebook page in the description below. Thanks again to Matt from Fletforge. Go check out his Etsy page. If you find any of this content valuable and you'd like to support the channel to help it keep it going, you should go check out my Patreon page. I'll put a link up here. Or you can make a one-off donation via the PayPal link in the description below. Thanks again so much to everyone who supported the channel so far. You know, I really, really appreciate it and it really does help keep this channel going. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, ring the wee bell so that you don't miss out on next Found Abbey Friday. Cheers folks, thanks for watching. <laughs>